we're now going to perform agarose gel electrophoresis. Electrophoresis is a technique used to separate molecules based on their charge and size and an electric current is run passed through a gel and the samples move uh, along the gel depending on their charge. Okay. We're going to do agarose gel electrophoresis to check our PCR sample. This will allow us to check that the amplification has worked and we will put our sample in the agarose gel, we will run the electrophoresis and we will be able to tell if there is a band present and this will let us know that the DNA amplification has been successful. To run a DNA agarose gel electrophoresis you first have to prepare the gel and that is done using a gel former and the ends of the gel former are taped up. Three pieces of tape are used. This, when the gel is initially prepared, it's in a liquid form and it will set in this tank. So both ends of the gel former are taped and pressure is applied to ensure there are no gaps where the gel can actually leak out of the former. This is done at both ends of the gel forming tank. So the, the gel form is now ready to have agarose gel added. The comb is present to produce 16 wells in the gel. And this is taped into position. You can see the gel former has grooves along the length of the gel former. This means you can add another comb of 16 wells if you have more than 16 samples to prepare, like so. Okay, so we will now prepare the agarose gel. For preparation of the gel, we require 100 mils of trisborate EDTA, which is measured out using a measuring cylinder. So we have 100 mils of our trisborate EDTA and we're going to prepare a 1% solution of gel. So we need to add one gram of the gel to the trisborate EDTA. One gram of agarose gel has been weighed into the conical flask and to this is added the 100 mils of the trisborate EDTA. This is mixed and this solution will be heated to dissolve and melt the agarose and then it will be poured into the gel former. The agarose gel has now been dissolved and to the gel will be added 3 microliters of ethidium bromide. Ethidium bromide is a compound which will attach the DNA and this will enable us to visualize the DNA under UV light. So the ethidium bromide is well mixed into the gel and the gel is poured into the gel preparer. You then ensure there are no bubbles present on the surface of the gel. You can use a pipette tip. 
to get rid of any bubbles which are there. Now we have to wait until the gel sets and then it will be ready for us to add our samples. Once the gel has set, the tape is removed from the ends of the preparation. The comb is removed, leaving the sample wells and the gel is placed in the electrophoresis tank. Now 300 mils of trisborate EDTA buffer is poured into the tank to cover the gel. To the buffer, um, ethidium bromide has been added. and the buffer is added to the maximum fill line on the electrophoresis tank. The gel is now ready to have the samples added. So the pipette is set to the correct volume for each sample. A fresh tip is used for each sample. So the first sample is taken and carefully dispensed into the well. Care should be taken not to put the tip through the bottom of the gel when you're adding your sample to the electrophoresis gel. And a fresh tip used for each sample. The sample settles at the bottom of each well, ensuring that the DNA travels through the gel and not across the top of the gel. Once the samples have been added, the cover is put on the electrolysis tank and the wires are connected to the electricity supply. The current is then switched on. And is adjusted to the correct voltage. And now the gel is left to run for 30 minutes. Once the gel has run its course, the power supply is switched off. The lid is removed from the tank and the gel is removed and the excess buffer is allowed to drain off and then it is placed on some tissue paper. The gel is now ready to be read in the UV transluminator. The gel is placed in the illuminator. The door is closed. And then the gel is focused upon. So 
So here we have an image of the gel focused and the bands are fluorescing in the UV light. On the left here we have the reference ladder with known DNA sizes from 10 kilo base pairs down to 100 base pairs here. And you can see that the smaller base pairs move the furthest. And of the six samples which are loaded, three are showing bandings. Uh, these three have bands just over 200 base pairs and the one in the middle has one about 150 base pairs as well. So that would suggest these two are homozygous, whereas this one is heterozygous. So it has one gene which is this size and another piece of DNA which is this size. So once we've visualized the gel, we can print a picture of it and keep that as a permanent record of our analysis.